So Jennifer, first of all then, can you tell me a bit about your own kind of history working in the pottery industry? Yes, well, I started when I left school at 15 and I went on, um, on a pottery called Booths. It was at Tunstall, High Street Tunstall. And I just went on, didn't know what to expect. Anyway, um, I just started work and they put me on these, what you call, was when they used to have the, the BOAC trays on the aeroplanes. And they were like a square tray and we used to have to, and then I, they learned me how to back, put back stamps on them. Anyway, it went from that and then uh, I learned to um, do some gilding, putting gold around the edges of, of pottery. And um, this is sort of by hand at first. And then they, they brought these um, gilding machines out. They were like a machine, they looked not like a, a robot, but they got like, you used to sit at them and then you used to have to, they got it like arms on and you used to have to put liquid gold in, in these little slots and then alter the buttons to come down onto your wear. You used to press a, a pedal and it used to gild around, around them. And then you used to uh, sit on them and take, and then there was lithographers on two belts two belts like and the, the way used to come down was to take it off put it on three gilded and then put it in cranks they were like um three three what is with pins in you used to have to put, put the plates in the in the cranks and then used to take them up and put them in the kills and then from that i went um we were closed they closed down that one then and then i changed over, over to ridgeways and that was another factory um, and then I worked there until uh, I got married and then the other children. And then I started on, started on nights on uh, Burgess and Lees as well. I think it's Middleton now, in Middleport where they had the poppies. But it was a broken down place. Anyway, I, was, I learned to do transferring on there. And we used to have to do, um, the patterns were called Arden and Calico. And they were like a, a, a pattern that was all over, it was inside and outside, and they were like jugs, big jugs. They were called uh, uh, ewers, jugs, basins and ewers, they were called. Anyway, I did a few years on there, and then the night, night shift finished. So I started on another at uh, Wedgwood City, that was another one at Tunstall, and did a night shift there. I was doing lithographing and, and uh, uh, transferring and everything on there. And um, then that closed, the night shift finished on there. So um, when the girls were big enough like, to come from school, I did uh, school hours and I started on the days on Woods. And it, you knock Woods it was, down Middleport where I lived. And um, I started to do well, more or less everything, and then I started banding. I just carried on with the gilding, then I started doing banding, colour banding, um, lithographing. Transfer, you name it, I did it. You've done it all. Oh, I've done it all. And, um, you know, we used to d do different things, and then, uh, then they went into liquidation. So I went on this other, the other woods, Stanley Woods, that was at the other side of uh, Newport Lane. And uh, that's where I spent most of my time until uh, I finished retired on there, like, and uh, where I was doing everything on there, washing off for the lithograph lithographers, transferers. Then I had to, um, and then they used to come to me and ask me to go help out in the dipping now, so you used to have to take off the, for the dippers and put them in on stillages and put them in big trucks. And then uh, I started um, <laughs> biscuit selecting, like when you spin, been in clay state when it's been fired and it's in biscuit state. You used to have to check all them over and uh, check the faults and things like that. And then um, when that was slack and there wasn't much work on that, you used to have to go upstairs into the gloss department and do gloss selecting. <coughs> and it was just wherever it was needed really, you know, but uh, my main, my main thing that I liked really was the gilding, but there was never really much for that in the lining. And so wherever I was needed, I used to, used to just say, Jennifer, can you come do this, help out and do this? And, and I used to do it like, so I got, I mean, I did have to learn to do the things that I was doing before I could just sit down and do it. I mean, you couldn't just say, can you go do some biscuit selecting? I got to learn, learn how to do it, for, you know, and different things. But um, I really, I really enjoyed doing what I was doing. And like I say, I never did anything else. That was from me, from when I left school right up through to um, 
So we have been on three, I would say four different places. And how many years do you think you, you worked in the pottery? Well, from when I was 15 and took till I was uh, 54. So we did like 40 years, nearly 40 years. So to be working in the industry that long, there must have been something that you enjoyed about it. What did you enjoy? I mean, just generally speaking, I mean, mm. you've worked in quite a few places, mm. but generally speaking, was there something that you liked about working in Fox? Yes, there was. Well, uh, friends, and used to make friends, used to have laughs, and used to have jokes between one another and, and different things, you know, and everybody was so friendly and everything. And as far as uh, when Peace Week, you know, I didn't do anything like the Peace Week. That was like when the experienced lithographers and, and things like that, when they were a bit, you know, they got the, a, a proper job. That was their job, just their job all the time. So they were sort of like Peace Week. Um, what was the atmosphere like then? You mentioned then it was quite friendly. <coughs> oh, yes, what yeah. What was it like to be, to be on the factory floor then and to be part of that? Yes, enjoyable. Is strange. The only th thing I used to watch it is summertime because there were concrete floors, and when it was hot, very hot weather, your feet used to get really hot. You know, so we used to have to put pieces of cardboard down to stand on and put his feet on. You know, and that like because it really warm, really deep, really come up the floors. You know, but um, we just enjoyed it all. I enjoyed all the jobs that I did, really. You know, um, because it was. I, I never really wanted, thought about doing anything else, um, you know, so... What kind of role do you think women played in kind of in the pop bag scene? Because of, you know, you're a woman yourself, what sort of role did women play and, and why were they an important part of the pop bags? Um, well, generally where I, where I worked, it was generally the women like, and I think we, I think we played an important part. Well, I, th I thought I thought I played an important part. <laughs> I mean, I don't know really, but you know, it, it was it was just it was, I just enjoyed getting up and going, clocking on with my car and the clock, and then just going and sitting wherever I was at me me bench, or you know. And then when I, when we were selecting, sitting on like a chair like this, and then we used to have uh, the trucks like what they used to on wheels, four wheels, it used to have to push, and then they used to have another truck at the side of me with. A, or what they call bongs of wear, you know, and you used to have to go through all them, transfer them onto this other truck when he selected them, and then the the bloke that was, you know, what it used to take them out, and then they used to go either on a stamping machine or a back stamping machine or or wherever they'd got to go. The cups, and then the cups would perhaps go on a on a belt, and they'd be boxed up in boxes to go and take to be decorated and different things. So there's a lot of lots of things that. That I was that were going on, you know what I was doing, really. Did you ever feel kind of, <coughs> in any way, shape, or form, that there were any different atti attitudes towards women on the in the pottery industry? Were, um, were you ever aware of any any form of discrimination or any uh, people's attitudes toward you? Toward mm, no, <coughs> really, no, not really. Everybody seemed as if everybody got on with everybody. You know, there used to be one or two little qualms over over where, like if. Uh, I was working on some biscuits selecting and the other lady was with me and then she perhaps get up and pick, you know, some of the best wear which is easier to do rather than harder to do. And then you used to have a little bit of a qualm now and again, you know, over that and saying, well, you know, she used to be there picking. Because the, there was good wear, there was heavy wear and there was light wear. You know, like if you're doing all the wear, like jugs and... Uh, creams and things like that, you know, it's pretty easy to do, but when you were left with all the big dip, great big dishes and, you know, those soup trees and different things like that, you know, it was heavy, heavy going. So you used to try and even out what, you know, try and be a bit fair like and... And what was the kind of, the atmosphere like then amongst you and your fellow workers? What was the atmosphere like on the factory floor? Yeah, all right, yes, fine, yes, and heavy. I don't know what it was anybody or anything, it was all right. How mm. kind of, um, how important do you think the pottery industry was to kind of like Stoke-on-Trent and people's lives around here? Uh, very, it was very, yes, but sorry, good. How important do you think it was? Very important then, because there was such a lot then to go at, you know. I mean, same as I say, if when I first started, if I didn't like the job what I was doing, um, I could leave and go somewhere else because, you know, it was there for you. But it was just comfortable, just because it was close to home as well. 
me and her, like at my dinner time, used to go home because I lived, only lived along the road from where I was. So I didn't have to travel on buses or, or anything like that. So it was handy for me that way, for schools and things, and you know, for like that. So. Um, was it quite supportive then? I mean, if you had children that were at school, were women able to kind of work shifts that were, they were? I think, yeah, I did, did, did do the school. I was till they were old enough to come from school to let themselves in and, you know, until I got home, like. But I did do full time, like, well, that was as they got older, like. But I did do the school. I was when they were sort of smallish. Um, but, but yes, I. Uh, I can't hear, I couldn't fault it at all, really. Was that something that lots of women did that worked on the pop bands, that they'd be able to work in school hours and then finish? Yes, I think, yes, I think the majority of them did do, yes. Did you feel mm. supported by the pot to do that? Were, there, were, were people able to, happy to do yeah, that? Yes, I think. As long as you, you, you put it to your boss and, you know, and you had the permission to, to do that, and they said it was OK to do that. And then uh, as long as you, you know, you've got your clock card right and your time that you're going and time you're coming on and all that like, I was, was fine. Well, so just to go back to, to women and men working on the pop banks, as far as you were, were aware, was there any difference between what women were paid towards what men were paid? Um, well, I don't, I don't really know. I never really looked into that really, you know. I didn't say, you know, because I was, I was happy like was what I was getting like, so I never really questioned uh, what the men were doing really, because we'd be doing different different types of jobs. It isn't like, same as um, when Ella said, you do just one certain job and you piece work, and then you know what your, your wages are. Me with me doing different jobs, my, my wages were there anyway, do you know what I mean? So I don't, I don't, I didn't really question that really. Is there anything that you kind of miss about working uh, in the pottery industry? Uh, what now? Yeah, I mean, kind of when you kind of look back on your life, yeah. spent working in mm. the pots. I did have a lot, quite a few problems with my joints when I was working on there, and um, I just had a, a few times off on the club because of joint problems. And uh, if I, I was thinking if I got go back today now, I wouldn't be able to do it today now because of problems that I'm having now. And it, all that problem was only through what I was doing, but I did it anyway, you know. So. Do you miss kind of like the friendliness or the camaraderie? Is there anything mm. from the Well, I do now. I see quite a few people, friends now, that I worked with, even now, when I'm out and about, and I see them, people, girls that I worked with. Quite a few, you know, when we look back on it like, you know. In fact, I've got a neighbour, and I work with my neighbour, who lives next door to me, and we, we worked together on the on the gilding machines when we were on the, on the, what, for the, and she was working with me, she lived next door, and I didn't know that until I moved to where I am. And is it kind of like, if you see kind of old friends, mm. uh, women friends from back when you were working, is it a chance, do you find it easy to kind of catch up, or is it a, a pleasant experience to be able to reminisce? Yes, yes, we, we do, we always think, say, like, how it used to be, and we used to have uh, crack jokes and that. And a lot of, a lot of the, um, I think a lot of the men used to crack jokes and things to you, and then, you know, and used to pass it down to us, and then we'd have a little laugh and a little giggle, and, you know, it was. You just have to look around sometimes if the boss, the bosses were watching. <laughs> <coughs> just a couple more questions, then, Jennifer. Were you kind of proud to be part of this ceramics industry because it's something that's been quite important to Stoke on Trent? Yeah, and yeah, the I was. Of the area. Yes, I was proud. Yeah, yeah. Why were you kind of proud to be part? Well, I think it's all, all the, the the patterns and all the things that we did. I mean, when we were gilding, it was um, this, this precious night was precious gold. Like you had to be very, very careful what you how much you used and different things. You had to be very careful, you know, what you did. And um, I think we're proud of it that way because we were we were learnt. I suppose we were learnt in a way in that same as now. There's a lot of when I was working, there wasn't a lot of the health and safety issues. Whereas I think probably now, I think there probably is, you know. So, um, no, I was just just proud to be doing what I was doing. Fantastic. You know, and, um, you know, but I, I know same as the problems I had with going to different places, but that wasn't through no fault of mine. I mean, 
two of the places when they went into liquidation like and then and then I well, didn't take long to me well they transferred us from when I went on to the Enoch Woods where I said it's that was Fairlong Lane when we what and then they transferred it to the other woods which was the other side of the road like and they all transferred most of us to there all, all them that wanted to go back there were asked and if we wanted to go back there we could do and I decided to go back on that one to there it's interesting then you mentioned health and safety. How do you feel health, I mean, and it's, I mean, you've had a long career in the pottery industry. How did health and safety change in your time then? I mean, what can you remember from the start, which you think might not have been there at the end? How did it change? Um, well, I don't know really. Like, like I said to you, we just, have to, we just have to be careful what we did and what we used and now we, prepared everything, you know what I mean, but, um, I, well, I don't know what health and safety is like today now, so I know it is a lot more serious than, it, than, than then, yeah. you know what I mean, so, um, we just had to be careful when we were working that if you had any problems with the chest, with the dust and, and things like that, you know, if you're inhaling the fumes and things, if you had any problems like that, you just had to report it, even just so they knew that if anything happened to you, you, you told them, you know what I mean? It was just that, really, that was just... And so. do you feel... <clears throat> I mean, there's still pottery factories about today, and it still is a viable career for, for women in this area. If you had, say, we might have, if you've got children of your own, or, or, or grandchildren, or whatever, what advice would you offer to, your, to, to women looking for a career in the pottery industry today? Is it something yeah, well, I would. Yeah, I would say go. I would say go for it. I think it's because that was the only thing I ever did. I didn't do anything else. So, in my opinion, if if it's something they want to do, then yes, take it up. Yeah, but learn a good trade. Don't be sort of like how I was, sort of learning different things where it was needed. You know what I mean? I mean, don't get me wrong. I was I was good at what I did when I did it, but I didn't have the long-term training that somebody that was, say, a, a lithographer, that did, just did lithographing only for years and years, do you know what I'm saying? But, um, uh, yeah, I would say go for it, but learn, learn a trade. Perhaps, you know, painting, which I would have loved to have done, but they didn't do that where I worked, you know, figure painting and things like that, which I would have loved to have done. Um, and colour banding, gilding, you know, things like that, a trade like that. Fantastic. That's everything. Thank you, Jennifer. Is that Thank a, you for taking the time to that. I'll ask you one more thing. Can I just take a quick couple of photos just of Steph filming you as though you've been interviewed? Would that be okay? Yes, be okay. Has it gone all right? Stuff. That was a fantastic <laughs> interview. Thank you so much for handing it back and taking the time to do that. I do genuinely I'm not very good with, you know, speaking out.